Hey guys, this video we're gonna show um, how to install valves, um, set your, or, or to check your installed spring height, um, your installed stem height, and then assembling, putting the springs and stuff on. Um, so anyways, we'll get after it here. All right guys, we're over here, uh, over here checking uh, installed spring height. Now, this one, oh, there's more than one way to do it. Um, this is the gauge that I have, one of the gauges that I have for doing it, which has been around for years. As you can see, it's kind of damaged from somebody smashing with something. I'm actually going to make a new one um, just so uh, I'm just getting sick of having to stare through this. But anyways, so... Basically what we're going to do is you put your retainer and your locks in there and we're going to measure the distance between the bottom of here and where the spring goes down in here. So this gauge, so your base zero is one inch on this gauge. And what you're going to do is you put it in there. And what we have, I don't know if you guys will be able to read that very well or not. You might probably can't read it because that gauge is so scuzzy, but it's uh, it's an inch, 943 thou. Now our spring height should be an inch for, uh, sorry, an inch 940 thou. So we're three thou over what we're supposed to be, which isn't detrimental by any stretch of the imagination. Now we are going to put this on. You have to account for this thickness. This is gonna add 25 thou to the height. Now that being said, that's not there again astronomical. No, but something to um, take into consideration. If you're putting a set of 60 pound valve springs in with a uh, a stage four Colt cam or a uh, Hamilton 188 220. Uh, one, a 60 pound valve spring at original installed height, you will actually get coil bind. So then if you add this to it, you're gonna hit coil bind. So that is something to take into consideration. Um, if you're having a head built by somebody, make sure you tell them what camshaft you're using with the lift. Um, now, lots of times being that I only cut a little bit out of these seats, I didn't get carried away um, and I use new valves. That's the reason that we're still within spec. Uh, as these things wear and the seats get in there higher, that stuff changes. But just to, something to take in consideration when you're doing it. Most of the time, you know, like this isn't a crazy engine by any stretch imagination. I'm not sure if I'm going to put a stock cam in it or if I'm going to use a little bit better cam. That I'm not really sure of. Um, but I will, uh, I'll keep you guys apprised of that. I might use a little bit better cam, but nothing that's going to hit coil bind on a, on a, a stock, well, which is a 60 pound spring, which is a still a stock spring for a marine application, but, um, or industrial stuff as well. So I just wanted to show you how I do that. Now, another way to do it is you can buy this style. Um, and this is basically the same idea is you just come out and then you, you read it, right? So what, uh, the only thing with this one is it doesn't go high enough. It only goes to um, 800. Well, I guess you could probably go, nah, you can't go to 900. Probably like 850. So you, if you were gonna use this one per se, you would have to have something to put underneath it to like a shim, a couple, some valve spring shims, which valve spring shim, um, this isn't the right size for these. They were just sitting on the bench here, but um, something like that. And then you would have to stack a bunch of these on top of each other to do it. Or you get one of these that goes to two inch um, would work as well, um, or something like that. Now, something else you can do um, is you can use a snap gauge to do this same thing. It's a little bit harder. Um, I personally don't do it this way. I have done it this way before, but basically you use a snap gauge. This is a snap gauge, snap gauge set. 
These aren't expensive ones just because they get banged around all the time. I think they were like 50 bucks. But basically what you do is the same thing as this. Basically the same thing as this. You do is get it in there. Get it around the other way. Hard part is sometimes getting it in there because you don't have space to get it in there. So if you can't get it in there, it makes it difficult, but you just get it in there and get it in the right spot, pull it out. And then what you do is I know a lot of you guys aren't going to have a set of mics for doing this, so I'll just use a caliper. But this it gives you a general idea. Yeah, so it says we've got... Actually, it's pretty close. So you're an inch 942 thou. So you can do it this way. Um, just for simplicity's sake, we have, you know, tools like this for doing it. Just for speed, I guess you would say. But anyways, that's uh, um, how you do that. Um, I'm gonna do the valve springs. Um, there again, that's not rocket science. You take it apart, put it back together, but I guess I can show you. I'll put the valve, the, the seals on um, and the um, springs on tonight, and then I'll probably call her good for tonight. Um, the next video, uh, being I don't know what I'm gonna use for a camshaft, um, I'm waiting for the pistons so i guess i could put the front timing case and stuff on um but that's not really rocket science there again but i'll put it I'll, I'll show you guys putting that on how i how i how we do it um and then uh but anyways i'm gonna go into time lapse um i'll bang these seals on the springs on um something else to note too as well i guess so something that you do want to take in consideration um is these are the valves these are like i said all new valves but when you go to put this stuff back together and it's dry, you need to lube this. So what we do, we use engine assembly lube so it doesn't drip off, which is just that the same stuff I use on the bearings. Um, and all I do is just roll your valve in it, get a nice gob on the end, and then just roll it while you're going in. And then that's, that's pretty much, but that's something you always want. You can use engine oil too, or any sort of engine engine lube for that matter um, lots of times when you buy an engine kit you can get it with lube but just wanted to show make sure you guys oil lube um, you know whatever you're doing as far as that goes uh, because you want to make sure that it uh, it has some good material in there so I'm going to bang it into time lapse now. I'll finish this off and then I'll come back. Uh, maybe I'll do one with you guys watching just so it makes the video not too long. All right, just see me doing the rest of the valves there, getting them lubed up. <coughs> the only thing I'm putting the painter's tape on there is just to protect the surface from getting scratched. Hit it with a little WD 40 just so the seals slide on easier. And then I have uh, this tool that I made up for tapping them down. You don't have to tap them too hard, but you want to make sure you get them seated. Get springs on and uh, get the retainers on and then off we go to seat and guide machine put the springs on just easy way for me to do it um not really just put the keepers in there it's not really rocket signs and then uh here in a second we will be to the last one you will youtube time and i'll show you in regular time for that one So just thought I'd show you guys. So I'm using the seat and guide machine. So back here, that's the seat and guide machine for doing this. Um, you can use that tool that I've used in some of my other videos, but this is a, a way faster way to do it. Um, so this is how I do it. And then I also have, I also have this little guy here, which is kind of does the same idea. It's just that it's to get a Cummins head on there. It's just like it just fits. It's a little bit of a pain. So I just do it on the seat and guide machine. So. Basically, you just get your spring on there. Um, and then all you got to do is just compress it down. So this table floats on air, so that's why I can move it so easy. Just you let the air off and then it stops floating. So super convenient for doing this. 
And then this thing has a servo motor in it for pushing down. You just get it centered up. And you could do this, you could build, if you were doing this all the time, you could build all kinds of different stuff for doing this. You can use a spring compressor, like old steel spring compressor, which I have. I just, you do it the easy way when you have the equipment, right? So you put your keepers in there. Now, when I roll the keeper, or when I roll the valve in the uh, um, bearing guard or the assembly lube, I, the reason, part of the reason I roll that tip is that you get a little bit in the end of the valve um, and then it holds the keepers in there for you. So that's literally all there is to it. Now, something else that you want to do, though, um, that I see lots of guys not do, whoop, see lots of guys not do, is you want to make sure those keepers are set, it, set in the right spot. So what you do is take a dead blow. You don't have to hit it real hard, but just give them a whack. And that seats the retainer to the locks to the valve. And that's literally all you have to do. Now these are big valves, so if you were doing it on something else, you don't want to hit straight down. You really should hit straight down. But I'm not hitting, like I'm not hitting very hard. So you do that and that helps. And if you have a keeper, or if you have a lock that's not in the, or a keeper, not in the retainer properly, um, and you do that, it'll shoot out of there. And you'd rather find out that it's not in there and shoot out right now than when the engine's running because otherwise it drops a valve and yeah she's all over the crying at that point um so anyways that is going to um that's going to be the finish of this video um if you guys have any questions comments hit me up um let me know it, um you know if i'm missing something that you want to see let me know in the comments and i'll do my best to do it for you all right thanks guys All right, guys, I realized that I, uh, I forgot earlier in the video to do install stem height on the video. I got carried away and I didn't click the button. So anyways, this is the jig for doing it. You can do it other ways. Um, but this is just basically a dial. You could make one of these if you had some pipe and stuff to do it. But anyways, so our installed stem height is basically, whoop, I lose the valve, is this edge where the spring would sit to the top of the valve here. So put the gauge on. So our base starts at two inch. So we're two inch, 85 thou. So spec is actually this is a brand new cylinder head, and I haven't recut the seats yet. Um, we will recut the seats on this, but right now we're actually under spec. So our spec is two inch 110 thou to two inch 130 thou. So we're actually on the low side, short side. But as you cut the, the seat in more, you cut the seat in more, the valve is gonna end up getting longer. I shouldn't say longer, it's gonna be deeper in the head, right? So lower is better than higher but the geometry changes as you as that range changes your geometry changes not astronomical stuff you know a let's say a 750 800 horsepower engine down it isn't going to make that much difference even in a high high horsepower it doesn't make that much difference it's just that if the geometry is off when the when the rocker when the rocker comes down it's it has to shove sideways on the valve first before it starts to shove down on it and then on the rock so the the on the as the rocker if you look at the rocker hold well, on let me set this down as you look at the rocker and the rocker if you have the valve if you have it and it's it's pushing down on it perfectly straight, right? It's gonna do just, it basically does this, right? But if this is like this and it shoves down on it, it moves more and you want it in that, in the sweet spot. And same with if it's too low, then it's like, I'm, I'm exaggerating cause that's like crazy amount. But when it does it, then it, it's shoving like this, like it's not sitting perfect. You want it to sit perfectly in this pad. 
and that's the reason for setting stem height and like in race stuff um like race applications and race cars and and uh circle tracks that type of stuff um they actually will shim the rocker a height so that it's shoving perfect because you gain more horsepower because the lower your resistance in your valve train you actually gain power or you're not wasting power i shouldn't say you gain power you get power back because you're wasting the power but anyways that's uh, as easy as it is to check it's not hard um you could do it you could do it yourself um pretty simple you would have to have something that you could slip down over top you would have to have something that you could slip over top um, of here that would come up like just see if i can do something here if you knew the length if you had a socket the right length that one's too long of course let's say this is a socket you could set that on top of there and then measure the height from this edge to this edge as long as you know how long you can reference how long this is you could do the same thing so you know some of this stuff you can do with without special tool well, the specialty tools to do it just want to make sure that you can you you want to measure like three or four times and make sure you're getting the same measurement every time right because otherwise you're kind of defeating the purpose if you're getting the wrong number it's not doing any good but this is something that your machine shop um, is going to check anyway and like I said, unless it's like crazy out, you know, or you got a valve that's wonky or something like that. But when you're checking, like, well, you know, when you're you're putting new cylinder heads together with new valves and stuff like that, you want to check that stuff because, you know, like this valve has been an engine, but you get a new valve. I've had new valves a hundred thou longer than they're supposed to be. Like this stem length is hundred thou. Well, unless you actually measured it, you don't notice. Now, I actually noticed it when I measured the, end, the length from end to end on valve because it looked funny because it was just like had them sitting there and that one looked longer. So I measured it. But when you looking like when you when you're done, um, you look across the top of the valves like across here and you got one that's way higher. Well, there's it's either sunk way down low in the head or there's something funky going on. So just, you know, something to look at. Right. I guess I forgot to do an outro. So uh this will be the end of the video on this one. Catch you on the next one, guys. Uh, please like, subscribe. If you've got any comments, hit me down.